this, this will be short. Uh, previous speaker talked about uh, the need for uh, better options for intracarbdominal and pararenal and juxtarenal uh, and uh, repairs. We all know that the options are limited uh, right now for FDA approved only for uh, ZFIM for uh, juxtarenal and the custom made uh, devices are only available not off the shelf for juxtarenal is only ZFEN and uh, as a previous speaker talked to these are only indicated for four millimeter, four millimeter uh, NAC and when it comes to tracheobdominal uh, the limitation is farther to uh, only a few centers to, to do physician must sponsor investigation of devices and it's not really commercially available. So uh, for p people who do have limitation from the hospital administration or from the legal team that uh, they don't really uh, let them do physician modified graft or laser fenestration. I think I'm here to share with you uh, our experience with uh, parallel endograph. I think there are th uh, various uh, configuration. These can be used off the shelf in various configurations, snorkel chimney and uh, periscope as depicted in this picture. And the issue obviously with these, the, the previous uh, devices, obviously is that the the standard of care would be if you can make as custom-made devices, but a lot of these devices are uh, take time to make and are under investigation. So uh, we looked at our uh, experience at the Mount Sinai where I was there with Dr. McKinsey. We looked at two years' experience. Uh, the, we, liked, uh, we wanted to sort of assess the outcome of uh, the parallel endograph and sort of had uh, ZFEN as a benchmark, and we kind of compare uh, the parallel endograph to, uh, to ZFEN for juxtarenal, supranial, and uh, thoracoabdominal endograph at single institution. I'd like to emphasize as the, the data uh, as uh, such as this, when we look at the data from multiple institutions and from uh, VQI, I don't think we have granular uh, uh, in information about the anat anatomical constraints and how we actually do these cases. I think these data from single institution give you a little better understanding. We wanted to just sort of see the, uh, the patency of the graft and morbidity and mortality. Uh, this was a retrospective review of all patient, consecutive patients that underwent juxtorenal, suprarenal, uh, thracoabdominal endograph from 14 to 17. Uh, we, we measured uh, preoperative mortality with graft patency intervention, uh, aortic and overall survivals. Uh, we use various uh, techniques for uh, for parallel techniques, but uh, if there were more than two uh, that needed for four vessel uh, technique, we use uh, the sandwich technique. We, we did this in hybrid suite. Uh, the axis were bilateral femoral, uh, usually percutaneous. The axillary uh, axis used uh, with the conduit if we are doing more than two uh, parallel endograph. We use brachial approach if we just needed one or two, less than two. <coughs> And for the stent graft, uh, we use uh, self-expanding or balloon expandable. When we use self-expanding stent, uh, these were wire bonds, we relined it with uh, uh, bare stents. Uh, so uh, visceral and renal anagrade access was uh, performed from uh, axillary cut down. We performed 20 to 30 percent oversizing. Uh, as the graft, uh, you need at least 30 percent oversizing. We, the grafts are smaller, uh, smaller. And for instance, if uh, you're using four, uh, four vessel uh, uh, parallel, uh, you need extra extra room to accommodate all these uh, parallel branches. Self-expanding uh, wire bonds uh, with redlined with uh, uh, various stents. The sandwich, snorkel sandwich technique was used for renal, so essentially we came down from above. Uh, we staged this procedure as needed. We would come down from above, Canada celiac and SMA, come down, put the cuff, come down, and then do the renals, cannulate the renals, and uh, uh, would go down to bifurcated grafts. Uh, so out we performed, uh, the technical success was 100%. 38 uh, parallel compared to 32 ZFENs. The perioperative mortality was, we had one mortality in each group, uh, which was similar. Those, both of these mortalities were due to uh, mesenteric ischemia. The uh, aortic mortality, uh, aortic survival at two years was around 95% for both groups. The, uh, the average uh, uh, follow-up was 12 months for this paper. Overall survival was uh, around 80% uh, at two years. 
And then reintervention was uh, similar in both groups, around 5%. Uh, we, I go over, so there were uh, three endolics in the parallel endograph. There's uh, the one gutter leak. The gutter leaks are obviously a Achilles heel of the parallel graph. We minimize the gutter leak with the el elongating the seal zone with the sandwich technique. And there was one patient that actually required embolization of gutter leaks. But in this paper, we showed that it usually they, they are similar, the, the survival and the uric free survival at, the, at our experience was similar. Uh, the endograph the thrombosis, we saw a, a couple in both the Zephan and also Parallel. They were similar. I think these are mainly related to the anatomical uh, reasons due to the renal uh, arteries and how they, they were stenotic at the, at the index procedure. So uh, the reintervention were uh, similar, although there was a little more, uh, there were seven reinterventions in Parallel group uh, uh, compared to five in the Zephan group. And as, as I said, I use Zephan as sort of a benchmark to compare our experience. But as I said, the overall more, uh, survival was similar in these patient cohort. So a couple of uh, patients, this is an 80 year old, and these 80 uh, year old male, uh, nine years ago uh, had a Cook EWAR, had multiple intervention due to endoleak, present with symptomatic 13 centimeter, uh, almost uh, impending rupture uh, Friday night. So we got sub subclavian access, uh, cannulate the uh, SMA and it's celiac, put a cuff, came down, cannulate. Uh, we do the triple kissing uh, to make sure that we are molding uh, the cuff toward uh, the parallel stent, come down, do the renal. And I think there are a lot of uh, us uh, practicing hospitals and health system that we get a lot of pushback from legal and from also other uh, people to use uh, without ID to perform PMEGs or even uh, laser finisterations. So I think these are, although off-label, but uh, pr you're probably more covered from, from that perspective. And the final uh, picture was good with no evidence of endolic. Again, these are for, again, another case. And this is a fo follow-up scan a year after. This patient obviously wasn't a candidate for open, had multiple other pro problems. So this was a, a, a repair that was, we were able to perform and take us out of Dodge without consultation from uh, CMS or DOJ. Or <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, that's, that was a success for us. The second one is this a recent one. I think I did it a, month, a couple months ago. Uh, 75 years old, uh, EVAR three years ago, probably shouldn't have gone e uh, it was so angulated, the neck was so angulated that probably needed uh, more than simple infrarenal EVAR. C c comes to us uh, from our outside satellite hospital from uh, Suffolk with essentially rupture, symptomatic eight centimeter uh, AAA. Not an open uh, candidate for open explantation, severe coronary disease. So similarly, uh, conduit, uh, so the conduit to axillary, you see the type one endoleak. Uh, for this one, I use a periscope with two uh, uh, snorkel, given the, uh, the size of the previous EVAR, and we were able to seal triple kissing, and post-operatively, -op uh, patient pain went away. Uh, there was a minimal, minimal gutter leak, uh, however, in the ultra ultrasound, and I saw him like a few days ago, and repeat ultrasound in the office, there was no endo leak, and he's, he's completely back to normal. So. Uh, we, th we think that parallel endograph uh, technique has probably, obviously, uh, probably similar outcome compared to PMEX in when it comes to juxtorenal. And this is a paper that recently was published uh, by uh, published that sort of sh showed the similar uh, survival rate for juxtorenal, but perhaps in more thoracoabdominal, maybe in more complex uh, abdominal, uh, th this VQI database showed that maybe, maybe there is better uh, patency, basic survival for uh, PMEX. Obviously, the gold standard would be custom made devices. But I think for juxtal renal, and in case that there are emergencies, and for a lot of us, which and the health system don't really let us do uh, anything that would be uh, related to no PMEX or uh, other, other alternatives like, like uh, laser fenestration, I think parallel graphing is a good alternative for treating symptomatic near uh, rupture patients. So parallel endograph has acceptable mortality and patency rates in, for juxtorenals and suprarenals. I think they are safe and viable options, despite 
know, treating more in, in treating more Asian patients, uh, and also I think a stage this should be a procedure should be as stage as possible uh, for long uh, segment aortic co uh, coverage. Uh, 